Um, let's talk about uh, briefing mm -hmm. and industrial design studio. Mm -hmm. So from the perspective of a client who comes to a company like ours, um, they have an idea for a product. Yes. Maybe it's just a spark of idea or maybe it's even something assembled from cardboard or whatever. Yes. Um, they need to somehow explain uh, to the designers and the engineers what they want to achieve, mm -hmm. how it's supposed to work, how much it's supposed to cost at the end, mm -hmm. and how should they um, prepare mm -hmm. for uh, starting a conversation with a design studio. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, don't get too stressed. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you don't have any idea how to prepare, uh, a product brief or a project brief because uh, it happens often that uh, we need to ask a lot of questions even to an experienced uh, company mm -hmm. who describes a new product uh, before we gather the whole uh, vision of the product how it's uh, what it actually is and what actually has to be done mm -hmm. so uh, this is part of our mission to to get get the information from uh, from from our clients so don't get stressed about it. We, will, we can work on that's that. That's a good start. Yes, that's a good start. But obviously it's uh, nice to, to receive a, an inquiry from a client who prepares uh, a very thorough written brief, uh, which leaves um, no question, no place. There is no place for imagination or uh, for any yeah. doubt and we can basically take this brief and transfer it into project specifications. Is, is that even possible? I, I think it happened maybe once or twice. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. So, so no development, no research, just yes, do it. A very detailed brief with uh, thorough description of every functionality, etc. So Okay, I, so that's like a black swan. It rarely happens. Yes, it rarely happens. So, But there are definitely a few uh, points that uh, should be taken into account when uh, when you develop such brief and uh, we can discuss and go over those points because I think it's uh, it will simply give you, uh, people a better idea uh, on what to include in this uh, product brief and what is actually maybe not that uh, critical for us when, yeah. when working on this. Sure. So, so what do you think uh, should be, uh, is there a, 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 like something in chronological order? What should I consider first when, you know, taking a piece of paper and mm -hmm. my product's brief? Yeah. So. Let's just start with the very basic things like introduce yourself and tell us about yourself because it gives us a very uh, good uh, background information on, uh, on, um, on your expertise on, on product development. Uh, so uh, don't assume that we know every company in the world. Just uh, tell mm -hmm. us about yourself. Tell us about the general idea on the product. Tell us about the strategy, whether this is something which is part of a larger lineup of products or whether this is a single product. So give us some background information uh, if you have any and share your vision, share mm -hmm. your vision uh, because this also sets up uh, our minds in a specific direction. Mm -hmm. We know that this, for instance, this product is a critical product in your uh, strategic um, company uh, development and it's nice for us to know this. And also give us some information about your um, technical capabilities, about your uh, people who will work on this project. And uh, this also helps us to visualize and, um, and the state uh, of the company and um, the people that we are going to, to, to be working with. So let's start simply with this introduction information. Yes. Yeah. So it's like introducing the company, their vision, the, a very general general bird's eye view yes. uh, aspect. That's right. And uh, of course, the product description is, uh, is critical information here. So we want to know your product in as many details as possible. So one of the points, a critical point uh, in every brief should be focusing on the product description and uh, try to be as thorough as, uh, as possible. Uh, a good practice is to imagine that you're describing the product to someone who has never 
seen anything like this before and uh, try to um, try to uh, get into the shoes of that person and uh, try to imagine um, uh, uh, and think their, their questions yes. what would their questions be their questions and whether uh, whether your phrasing or describing uh, of the of the product or uh, the functionality uh, would be uh, sufficient for that person to understand uh, what is he actually uh, thinking uh, mm -hmm. about this product and how it's going to look like and what it's going to do. So uh, think about um, those um, things when, uh, when planning uh, uh, the description. Also, uh, another uh, um, thing that it's worth including in the, in the, um, in the description or in information uh, which is uh, vital to us is whether this is going to be a product uh, for mass production, for mm -hmm. a, a short series run or a single product, uh, for instance, uh, a, a one-time uh, prototype or anything like that, because this also gives us uh, a certain um, focus on uh, uh, specific technologies that might be used for uh, manufacturing such product. Mm -hmm. So if it's going to be mass production, then we, we can assume that uh, certain tooling might be necessary for this uh, project. And if it's something uh, which is, I don't know, only planned for a short run series, a uh, few pieces or uh, tens of pieces maybe, then we will simply ignore uh, all the uh, technologies uh, um, which are uh, dedicated for mass production and focus only on something which is more affordable on uh, for for that kind of project so yeah and probably it would be best for to describe not uh, the the vo the volume of the production to describe it not in such terms that might be interpreted differently like whether it's mass production or serial production or whatever just say how many pieces you want to yes. do in the first year or the second year etc and that would probably be best for us to know yes. in order to choose the right technologies. That's right. This is, this is a very val valid point. Um, so I, 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 mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking, um, uh, since it's a brief for a new product, mm -hmm. then I, I know what it's supposed to be, more mm -hmm. or less, basically, but still, at this very early stage, I'm sure I don't have most of the answers mm -hmm. that you might expect me to have. Mm -hmm. So, for, do I just, uh, what do I do when I don't have the answers? So, of course, uh, having, uh, saying, uh, I don't know, to, to a question which we might ask is, <clears throat> is not a reason to, to, to cancel the, the, the project or to, to hold it. Uh, this, is, uh, this is something that we can clarify. Certain uh, projects or certain clients um, who come to us might simply don't know certain information or at, at that point of the project because um, either it is not yet planned um, ahead in, in for instance uh, what is the actual uh, pr production volume this sometimes happens okay it might be 500 pieces it might be 5000 pieces at this point we don't know this and this mm -hmm. is this information is fine with us as well and certain projects require uh, further research because if a critical functionality is is vague or is not clear uh, whether it's going to be critical actually or not or maybe there is it is not yet decided so this is something that we should work on maybe uh, we can also help trying to um, work on the brief trying to do a research phase or organizing workshops with our clients to to give them a, a broader perspective, uh, to do some um, deeper research on, on technologies, for instance, available for such, uh, for certain, um, I don't know, materials, for instance, mm -hmm. or technologies. And uh, this is something that uh, can be worked out and simply don't worry about uh, saying, I don't know. Yeah, um, sure. Mm -hmm. So my, my vision is, uh, is one thing, but obviously, I assume in most cases, if not all, uh, when someone comes to you and says they want to develop a new product, it's mm -hmm. not for them personally, it's for mm -hmm. someone else to use in yes. some sort of um, scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, 
how much uh, d does your work also include researching uh, the uh, target group in, in, in any way, or should I have all the data about how something might be used, exists on market, etc.? Is that on my side? So I assume that almost every product is dedicated at certain group, a target group uh, of people who are either going to use the product or uh, sometimes the target group might be people who uh, make the call on purchasing a specific type of product. So think about who is your target uh, group for, for this uh, product and let us know because it's also a valid point to think about uh, a person who is going to make the decision of um, purchasing the product uh, or using the product. And this is also something which I want to, to, um, to uh, underline that uh, describing only the functionality might not be enough, but uh, for products which are going to be used by um, people uh, which are going to be uh, functional and have, I don't know, various functions, mm -hmm. describe um, the usage scenarios for those, uh, for your product. So uh, give us the standard usage scenario, give us a, an edge case if there is any uh, for your product. Uh, and also remember to play a devil's advocate uh, with your own uh, ideas because uh, maybe it's not necessary to address all uh, each and every uh, need uh, of uh, each and uh, every target group uh, uh, when designing your product because it may generate additional unnecessary cost just to to i don't know to try to be mm, top notch in terms of functionality and to to give the users uh, all the functions that might be used by, I don't know, one in hundred uh, mm -hmm. people who are going to use this product. So we can discuss this, we can work out on the functionality and uh, on our end, we will also uh, indicate, uh, I don't know, dangers or maybe uh, red flags, which we see along the way that might generate additional costs that might cause uh, delays in, uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in the time frame needed to develop uh, a specific functionality, for instance. So uh, always think about the usage scenarios and and try to uh, to think about the critical functionality and the optional functionality. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, sort of to recap from where we started, we, we talked about uh, just the, tell us about yourself and your company and mm -hmm. your brand. So who are we working with? What's your goals? Mm -hmm. Or what's the product's goal? Um, then try to describe the product in as much detail as you can at this stage mm -hmm. uh, without uh, 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 going into so much detail that the, the concept will begin to be like uh, a chimera of, of everything. Just mm -hmm. focus, on, focus on things. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, tell us what you maybe don't know mm -hmm. or what you know that you need to find out in mm -hmm. order for the product to be uh, to be successful and of course i guess tell us what would the general scope of our work be should we yes uh, are we the the r d part do you want us to take the uh, development all the way to finding a vendor and overseeing production we need to know what to plan for that's right and even if you want to develop a, pro a new product, you might not just need our assistance in a specific stage or a specific part of the project. And uh, this is also critical information in terms of even pricing the, the whole process, because we need to know uh, whether we, we are going to be needed just uh, for, I don't know, the conceptual design or just for developing the, the actual electronics hardware, because this is also um, this might also be required and uh, well basically we need to know uh, what stages uh, of the projects uh, we will have to participate in that's that's the key here so the scope of work yeah mm -hmm. when describing the scope of work or any of the other things we talked about mm -hmm. I assume that for, for example me being a uh, novice product developer like this is for example the first time i'm developing a new product from for the market mm -hmm. probably the brief 
will be as detailed as possible, but still pretty vague in comparison to, I don't know, a company that has already tens of products in, uh, in, their, in their lineup, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely. It's a, even just by reading a, a product brief, uh, we get uh, to know our clients and uh, we, we can, based on analyzing the brief without even talking to the client, we can assume that they have certain experience in uh, new product development or manufacturing and uh, don't be afraid to share this information uh, if you if you plan your project ahead and uh, even if you plan for further stages just let us know that uh, uh, I don't know if you plan to manufacture this internally or if you have already a, a part of the team which is responsible for the um, hardware engineering or for um, mechanical design just let us know so this will also give us a good uh, idea on, uh, on uh, what our scope of work will be and how our, how our work will uh, simply look like. So don't be afraid to share this with us. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, I think uh, one thing that we missed and I wanted to mention is, uh, is, the, is the aesthetic factor. Okay. Yeah, because uh, people come and uh, they describe the project and uh, they also come with certain ideas in their head on how they want this um, specific product to look like. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not always easy for someone to describe or they might just give you a very general description. Oh, I want this to be pretty. No. Uh, make it pretty. Mm -hmm. Modern. Yeah, make it modern. Yeah. And this is a very vague description. and. Uh, it's very subjective because uh, you know the saying beauty is in the eye of the beholder, beholder. that's yeah. right and this is also the case because simply your expectations might be different than our uh, let's say um, our idea on this product so you expect something which would be minimalistic and we deliver something quite uh, the op on the opposite mm. uh, end and uh, that's why we try also to ask our clients to prepare a um, mood board uh, which would indicate positive and negative examples uh, on the aesthetics that they have in mind. Okay, so not, not just what I'm aiming for, but also what I really don't like. Yes, so that's also uh, valid information for us. For instance, I don't know, you don't like Apple products. Okay, <laughs> yeah. You, you think common. that they are... <laughs> too common and uh, simply you don't want the, such aesthetic in your yeah. product so indicate this to us we've had uh, we always uh, during uh, the q and a session uh, uh, with our clients we always go uh, over the uh, the inspiration the the mood board and discuss specific uh, pictures or as uh, examples and we try to uh, interview our clients what they actually don't like in this in this uh, particular mm -hmm. case yeah. whether this is a shape or whether this is i don't know the styling or uh, the the colors so it's it's a valid information for us and it also gives us a good idea on uh, what uh, the client um, might look for and uh, yeah uh, we don't like guessing when designing. We try to deliver something which is focused on on the specific uh, on a specific direction. Um, what about uh, the um, uh, what about budgeting? Budgeting is basically mm -hmm. in every uh, custom service uh, company, or, or especially ones with uh, a creative aspects, um, is always a, a problem. Mm -hmm. A problem as in. Uh, difficult to uh, um, anticipate in some in some way. Mm -hmm. So here, let's say I uh, am going to um, introduce a new product on the market, but it's my first time, mm -hmm. and you probably want to know my budget, and I actually have no idea mm -hmm. what sort of budget I should um, expect for I don't know what stage or what level of uh, uh, development of uh, of the product. Mm -hmm. How a company with little to no experience in developing new products, how should they approach budgeting? Mm -hmm. So I think that um, a good idea is indeed focusing on, the, on your actual uh, 
uh, needs for manufacturing this product. So whether you are planning to develop something for a mass market or whether this is just going to be a trial run for, uh, I don't know, uh, gathering uh, um, some feedback from the market before executing uh, a, a product which is uh, redesigned or a, a, a next version uh, iteration of, the, of your uh, first product. So uh, think about it uh, in terms of what are the actual uh, needs uh, for you as a client and what is your strategy for that product. And this will also help us to, to give you a, even a, a rough estimation on the costs related to developing products uh, for a mass market and versus going to a, a, to a less, let's say, just a, a handful of pieces yeah. just for, uh, a, a, I don't know, a very low volume uh, production. So this is, this is something that, that can help and definitely point us also in the right direction. And uh, I think that it's always good to be transparent uh, with, uh, with, uh, with a budget if you have any. Because, uh, for instance, I imagine a situation when a client uh, with a little uh, with little experience uh, in terms of calculating the cost of product, I might assume that I don't know, say a product will cost hundred uh, US dollars, and uh, uh, it turns out that they only want to spend five dollars uh, for uh, the housing. Of the mm. of this uh, item or this uh, this pro product, and uh, at that point we might say, okay, but this is a very limiting, let's say, amount of money for us because we can only work on something very simple, and um, your brief specifies that you want to develop, uh, I don't know, a next iPhone, for instance, and mm. uh, and this is this is a point where we're going to say this is unrealistic or or think uh, about uh, transferring some amount of the money or increasing the, the budget for, for instance, for the housing, because this will give us more options, more material options, more, uh, I don't know, finishing options even. And in some cases, uh, even we will be able to, I don't know, um, think about uh, including more parts, more functional parts. So it's often, uh, I understand that a budget at that point might be a, a, a wishful thinking or um, based on just uh, um, estimation, a rough estimation, but share this information with us, try to be transparent uh, so that we also know what are your expectations, whether we should aim uh, on a product which would be uh, heavily optimized in terms of uh, manufacturing costs or whether this is going to be a high-end product in terms of uh, quality and uh, materials used for that. So this and, helps. And in this context, I think a good example, I think uh, y you told me this example some time ago uh, about um, how uh, when someone approaches you and says that they, for example, want uh, a f and maybe not even a product like, like, like this, but for example, a part of their product will be something like this that they see basically everywhere available for a low price. Mm -hmm. And they expect that uh, if they can buy it for such a price, then they can surely produce it for an even lower price. Mm -hmm. But they're not considering they, that, for example, this very simple object costs five dollars everywhere yes but when they will be manufacturing their product for example uh, a fifty thousand pieces or five thousand pieces they won't be able to match that price mm -hmm. because they see it everywhere at a low price because it's produced in millions that's of right pieces. so it's often uh, uh, a target price for a product uh, is often unrealistic because of the the volume of the manufacturing because if you try to manufacture something in tens of pieces let's say obviously the uh, the unit price is going to be higher if you're optimizing the product for millions and uh, then you can simply assume that the cost of tooling uh, will have a very little influence over the end price of the mm. product so it's often unrealistic to uh, to to meet the target price, if if the uh, the actual volume is too low, for instance, 
and it's not even, uh, uh, let's say, our limitations on our end, but uh, think about the manufacturer who's yeah, going it's, to... It's just math. That's right. It's a math. And if a manufacturer is uh, seeing a project which is going to be um, mass-produced, they obviously can uh, give a better price and uh, assume that the client is a, uh, is a long-term client mm -hmm. and is going to, um, I don't know, stay with them for a few years at least. And this is a point for negotiations, of course, and uh, you can try to meet, to meet uh, uh, well, your expectations in terms of the target price. But uh, this has to be taken into account because it's uh, very often overlooked and uh, often uh, this, f uh, this factor is ignored when mm -hmm. planning the, the end price um, for the product. I understand all of that. Uh, when, uh, when I see a product on the market and I want to have a similar part included, or maybe I want to release a similar product, mm -hmm. then I su should simply um, analyze the, 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 the competition maybe more thoroughly to, to make sure if they're even local or global, mm -hmm. are they a huge producer or a small producer? Yes, definitely. And uh, just think about your company as well. What is your position in the market and uh, how can you compete in this market uh, in relation to your, to your competition? Because, uh, of course, everyone wants their product to, well, be the number one product in the mm -hmm. world and sell millions of units. I would settle for number, number two. Yeah. That's, that's good enough too. That's right. But uh, think realistically in terms of uh, what you're actually planning and what you're actually uh, going to deliver in the market and how, uh, how low can the price get uh, to still generate income for the yeah. company. So this, this is a very critical, I think, uh, um, information in planning uh, every project uh, because uh, this also gives us a very uh, good perspective on uh, what is what is the target uh, for that product whether whether this is going to be something uh, that has to I don't know be the number one in the world and absolutely top-notch and whether whether this is going to be or whether this has to be the, the cheapest product, for instance. Yeah. Uh, think about your product in terms of uh, um, advantages over uh, competitive products uh, which are present uh, in the market. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Whether this is going to be something, uh, whether you are going to compete in the price factor or whether you are going to be competing in the quality factor. It's always good to know this information ahead. To recap, um, when preparing a brief for developing a new product and contacting an industrial design studio like ours. Um, I should introduce myself mm -hmm. personally and the company and the brand and my vision for the brand or yes. the company's vision for the brand. Uh, describe the product as in as much detail as I can mm -hmm. at this stage and I should be okay with the fact that I might not know as much as I would wish to know. Mm -hmm. Maybe even I am aware that I don't know some crucial things. I should tell you that because yes. you will then try to find out for me, uh, sure. find out the answers. Um, I should try to describe the, uh, the volume of the product that I'm planning to sell per year. Mm -hmm. If I don't know that, I should also tell you that I don't know that. Maybe mm -hmm. you can find out some information about um, the target group. Mm -hmm. um, I should uh, definitely play devil's advocate with myself mm -hmm. and try to um, challenge yeah. everything I say mm -hmm. to, to see if maybe I maybe I'm asking uh, I'm, I'm giving you wrong information or mm -hmm. maybe I haven't thought everything through mm -hmm. um, and definitely I should let you know what my plan for the timeline and the budget is yes uh, the timeline probably if I don't have much experience both timeline and budget will, might be black magic for me yes but here you you can step in to help if I have some experience and I can tell you what's the budget what's the timeline this will help you to assess better 
how to approach the design, how to even um, kick the project off uh, with me as a more experienced sort of, uh, sort of player. Even if you're an unexperienced uh, player in introducing new products to the market, uh, treat the R&D process as a safety measure mm -hmm. that will simply uh, help you avoiding very expensive mistakes during the manufacturing, uh, logistics and, uh, and marketing stages. So and I guess product. that's the best uh, description, sort of uh, thinking about the design process, the R&D process as a safety measure yes. against costly mistakes, basically. So the better the safety measure is uh, informed mm -hmm. and performed, yes. uh, simply the safer your business will be. And the uh, lesser the risk. Yeah. Yes, true. Right. Uh, that's a great note to end on. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much.